You can't always rely on obtaining supplies when you go to the Bahamas. It takes some preparation, you know. It, after you make a trip a couple times, you realize what you need to bring, what you don't need to bring. Um, but you pretty much plan for everything. You have to think about the food that you need, the bait that you need, the tackle that you need. It's a lot of prep. I mean, it is a lot of prep. I, I had it set in my head that the first marlin that I was part of, I wanted to get in the water with it. And I was, I, I grew up admiring Jose Wahabi. He would always get in the water with, with fish. And I, I love to be in the water. I wanted to take that chance. I wanted to take that opportunity to get in the water with this blue marlin. The reason that we set this trip up was Camus came out with a brand new boat. New 34, hole number one. And I wanted to do something different with it. So often for years I've been confined to a bay boat and, or a hybrid, now we have a 28 hybrid, which is a great boat and we could do it. But we're sitting here in early March where the weather can be somewhat questionable crossing the Gulf Stream. So having a 34, triple 300 Barados, the reliability, sea keeper on the boat that makes the stability that much better. I wanted to test this boat. I wanted to put it to its limit, but we want, to, we want it to be fun. And when you can put people on the boat that are fun and do these trips with, with the buddies that are fun, it, these are the trips that you remember for a lifetime. George, make sure we're not tangled here. It's quite elaborate, Jimmy. Yeah, well, you know, go big or go home. This is a big boat setup here. I know you've been running big boats for a while. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's basically what we uh, what we pull on our big boat, minus uh, minus the big boat. <laughs> <laughs> When you pull up, start fishing, you put the spread out and you kick up a hundred, couple hundred flying fish, you know you're in a great area. And there's that much bait here, you have no idea what you're gonna catch. You could catch a barracuda on one turn and the next turn you could catch a, a blue marlin. Oh, a little dolphin. Nice dolphin. Oh, watch that, watch that chain, George. There's another one on the chain, give me another bait. There's dolphin everywhere. Grab that rod. Left, left long's getting left eaten. Long, left left long. Long. All right, it's good there. It's good there. It's good there. You're, you're on. You're already on. You're already on. You're on. You're good. Drop that back, George. He's eating the left chain. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh, they're all. Oh, look at how many. Look at how many on the chain. This one came off. Wow, nice fish there. Jackson, get the one out and grab this one. Yeah, mahi definitely cause chaos. They're a, a, a go-to fish in this area. They're highly sought after. You know, they're great game fish. Beautiful, acrobatic, aggressive feeders. Um, excellent eating. So they have everything to offer. I love catching dolphins. It's one of my favorite fish. But they come into a spread, they create havoc. They can eat one bait, a second later be over on another bait. And often it's not just one fish, it's multiple fish. You still on, Jimmy? No. No. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Tip up. Tip up. Keep reeling. Oh boy. Oh boy. Get over there, Jackson. Come all the way over. That's it. Right there. Stand right there. There he is. George, out of, out of here. He's not too big. He's a good one. Nice cow. Nice fish. Woo! Oh, nice. There's a bunch of mahis up here chasing flyers. Fish on! There he is. Go ahead, Jackson, grab it. Grab it, grab it. You got another mahi? All right, I'm gonna get him in there.
in the pocket, what is unique is you'll go from miles and miles of shallow water, you know, 10 feet or less, and, and then it drops off to the abyss. You know, these are just little rock outcroppings in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean that have been here for millions of years. And it's a cool destination that you have. You just, almost, it's just a jump off point to be in the middle of the ocean. That was crazy. All of a sudden you get in that area where just a lot of life. You wanna use this guy for cut? Yeah, we'll use him for deep dropping. Make a good deep drop bait. Heck yeah. All the way in, that deep drop off, deep drop. You know, the grocery shopping we get to do for a while with coronavirus. It's synonymous. Grocery shopping is what we call it. We need food for dinner. This area is known for this. You get an eight, 900 feet of water, you drop some squid or some cut bait down. It's, it's fun. I mean, it seems boring to a lot of people. I love getting out that hooker electric dropping it down to the bottom and just watching that tip. It's almost like being a kid and just watching your pole on a brim just to eat it. You, it but at eight, 900 feet of water, you have no idea what's down there. Yeah, like that, like that's a good bite. 800 feet, But you want to so. let all those little guys start pecking. Right. You know what I mean? And, kind of big some, guy. and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, what's going on over there? Ha ha. And that's then uh, we'll wait for the right one. Right to the surface. Sending it. Elevator ride, 800 feet, 926 feet up, here you come. And the snapper that you catch are just the coolest looking fish. Some of these yellow eyes, um, these silky, silky as they call them, or queen snapper. They're all excellent eating, they're coming from that deep cold water, excellent eating and they're the coolest, coolest fish to see. Jackson's favorite because it's, he just has to push a button, I don't it? It's, I mean, it requires some skill on driving the boat, and staying straight up and down, and baiting hooks. But I, I know why it's his favorite. He can, it's, it's gentleman's fishing. You can wake up and whenever, we get out there and drop a bait down and hit a button. Oh, I see some size. I see multiples. Good job. Oh, buddy, buddy. Keep coming. Keep cranking a little bit more. OK, good. All right, George, swing it up to George oh. there. Keep going. There we go, boy. Nice. Oh, that's good. Right there. Nice. Dinner and a show right Dinner there. Dinner and a show. Let me grab that weight. Two good ones. What do you say? Either cook them up the villa or have the restaurant there. Chef K do it. What do you think? Either way, they're going to be delicious. They do look and cook. <laughs> Strum in the Yeti. Nice work, fellas. Woo! If you don't love the water, if, you're, if, if your passion is not around the water, I don't know if this would truly be a destination for you, you know? It's a small island, but the fishing, the diving are absolutely incredible. So that's what you find people on the docks who have a shared common interest of, of, of the water. So everybody's always talking fishing and uh, talking diving. So it's fun. What do you consider big lobster? Uh, anywhere from four or five. Yeah, that's a good one. What's the biggest you ever caught? You ever, ever weighed really big ones? No, I never weighed them. Yeah, we caught some nine, tens, elevens. Yeah, up by us, yeah. giants. Yeah, we got some giants, you know, also. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of them don't get to live that long around here, though. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up right here on Chup. My grandfather, all of us used to come down here like for two weeks at a time. We come down here, fill up the freezers. We take back like a thousand pound of lobster, go back to Nassau. We come right back down here again. Plenty of times we used to sell stuff to like Chubb, to the restaurant. And so today, we, we still diving for the restaurant. We still diving for the club. On our off days, we go, we spare fish, we spare lobsters, all that we do for the club. Chubb keep being good.
I can sit here and tell you a lot of technical reasons why I love and choose my Mercury Verado, but really the most important thing to me is that they're super dependable, incredibly efficient, and really easy to maintain. We just crossed the open Atlantic Ocean, 200 miles to get to Chub K, and I tell you, I felt secure the whole entire time. The fuel efficiency with these new V8 Verados is absolutely incredible. We can make these long runs and be certain we have enough fuel to do it. When it comes time to servicing these motors, which we do every 100 hours, it's super simple, and anybody with some basic hand tools and a little bit of mechanical ability can do it. Most days you'll find me on the water fishing. It's not only my living, it's my lifestyle, and I choose Mercury. Ramon, I got hooked up with Ramon through Cameron Kirk Connell, who's a spear fisherman that comes over here all the time. As soon as you meet him, he's the salt of the earth. The guy is just a genuine dude. He spent his whole life on Chubb, and I know that he has just a wealth of knowledge to share. If there's anybody to go with, this is the guy. I like diving when the bone fishing gets slow, right? But the diving, the diving is pretty good. When, when we don't have nothing to do, we go and dive. We dive all day, spare fish, spare lobsters all day. I grew up doing it, so it comes, comes natural. Diving in the Bahamas, spear fishing, free diving. <laughs> if you love the water, this is a place to come. It has everything to offer. Giant lobsters, grouper, hogfish. You jump in there and it's a whole nother world below. Jimmy jumps in, and before I know it, Jimmy is coming to the surface with this lobster that looks like something out of Jurassic Park. I mean, this thing is huge. I did not think he was that big when I went down. My God! I did not think he was that big. Wow! In the Bahamas, you can spear him, so everybody knows that. Not, not legal in the States, but in the Bahamas, you can spear lobster, so uh, you have to use a pole spear or a sling, but Jimmy goes down, boom, comes up to the surface, and he's got this massive lobster. In you go. You feel free when you're down there. You don't have to worry about nothing. You just be looking around, it's like hunting. You know, you're hunting for a prey. So, lobster and fish, they really my praise. <laughs> Razor pointed out a big grouper. That was really cool, because that was kind of like a hunting technique. He said it was rocked up. I kind of went down and looked at it. And uh, I slid down. I kind of came over the top of a coral head and poked him right in his rock. And uh, I didn't know he was, uh, a, even that big too. It's amazing how they look underneath the water. There's so much going on at home right now and it's just, this is, you, you, you're so separated from the real world. You're here, you're on island time. Everything is kind of based on what what fishing you're doing next or diving you're doing. 
and you have no idea what's going on in the real world. You, you leave it all behind. You shut your phone off, you, and you get out there on the water, and you, you just enjoy it. You enjoy the time with your friends. You enjoy the time on the boat, off the boat, and uh, six days just goes by way too fast. Ready to do this? Yeah, man. Let's go. <laughs> How was your morning? Pretty good. Saw some fish? Yeah. A few hundred. No. Yeah. A few hundred. Yeah. Bone fish. Yes. I can't wait to see this side. <laughs> Is that common? Yeah. I'm oh. going to take you down there right now. We started running out, and he said it'd be a three or four mile run. And it's miles of flats that are just crystal clear water. It looks six inches deep and it could be five foot deep or it could be a foot deep, it all looks the same. And off in the distance, you see a little rock outcropping and he's like, that's, that's where we're headed. And you're like, oh, and anticipation starts to build. This is surreal. It is surreal. Look at him, he's just happy. All right, now you got to show me what you got. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Strip it. Strip. Got it. Oh. It, it is a neat experience. It's like everything that you picture about Bohemian bone fishing, that you're walking on this white sand and you're steadily approaching this massive school of bonefish. I have very limited uh, history with bonefish. I've caught a couple down in Key Biscayne soaking some shrimp, but never really sight casting to them, and never on a flop. Look at the color of that thing. Yeah, watch out for the shot. Ain't getting my bonefish. Yeah, he's coming though. What a great fish. Yeah. First one on fly. The first one on fly? First one on fly. Cool. Amazing. Good job, man. Ah, that was awesome. Okay. Amazing. Ramon is just a easy guy to talk to. You know, he, it took a little bit, he started to warm up to us, you know, and um, just start asking him questions. He starts to share his knowledge and, you know, he's probably feeling us out, you know, seeing what we're all about. Uh, my grandparents screwed me up. My mom and my dad, they, they had to go to work. So they sent me down here with my grandparents from when I was six weeks old. And I've been here fishing ever since. I went to school and I say, still came back. I got my degree. And I still came back and I did fishing. I, I have a passion for fishing. Keep on stripping it. All right, you got him. Got him! You! Look at that school of bonefish. Watch the bow, watch the bow. Wow. What, what an amazing sight. There are. 500 bonefish right here. <laughs> 500? 1,000? Yeah, you better count. A lot of sharks in here. Oh, get one. Thank you so much. How cool. You're welcome, buddy. Is this a typical size here? Nah, that's a small one right there. That's a small one. Yeah. <laughs> Your turn. You give it a try. All right, give then, me no that problem. Ball. I don't know what, how, to, how, how, how to steer it, but I'm going to figure it out. All right, then, Come down no here problem. and show me how no it's problem. done. This is not like a motor guide. <laughs> 
Josh, how much red knots you put in the line, man? A couple red knots in there? Yeah, I see three so oh, far. you gave it to me with knots. Ah, nah. You gave <laughs> it to me with knots. That couldn't have been me. Their life, their lifestyle is, is the water and what comes of the water. So they're, uh, it's a gem. I, I can't put it any other way. It's, you know, West End is, 78 miles from my house. This, this destination is 200 miles, but it's a middle of the ocean, it's a different world. You know, it's not always the fish that you catch. I always say that. It's the experience, the memories, the good times, the laughs. You know, it's the time that you spend on the boat, but also the time you spend that off, off the boat that, that really matters. We had a plane over us for probably 50 miles. Then we had a helicopter, and now we got a boat. So that's why you check in, kids. Look at this. We got flyers. Flying mahi. Flying Flying mahi. Flying, foot. flying fish. Frigates. Me getting slapped in the face. I just stubbed my toe. Oh. Combat fishing, combat fishing. Today you cannot get, uh, can only get, God, can't get, can't, can't go, it's whatever I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs>